So today I want to look at deploying Triple O in all these CMB VMs. So as I said in the last video, we've created these VMs that we will use for our direct our controller and compute nodes. I've just gone and recreated them now of some updated images. So let's take a look at our director node. So the first thing we want to do here is this has two routes. Um, well, it has a couple of routes for each interface at the moment, but we're going to be changing that. Now the problem with this is I can't reach it because of reverse path filtering because it has a path back to my system from each of these top two routes. So what we want to do is change the metric for the 10.0.2.1 route. We still want it to be able to reach that because that's the pod network. If I need to access anything within OpenShift, I can do it via that network. But we need to change the metric so that the main route goes via my main route. Arm. So to do that, we can do MCLI con show my look at our interfaces. So this system ETH0 is the interface we want to edit. So we'll do sudo nmcli con mod system ETH0. And we'll do IPv4 route metric. And we'll change it to like 1004, like just a really high metric. And then we'll just restart network manager. Okay, so now if we have a look at so if we have a look at ETH0 here now, we can see that this is system ETH01 and the metric for that route is 1004. So we do IPR. Okay, so we just um, set the interface down and then back up again and now it has changed in our route list. So now the default route for the traffic will go via my router, which means that I should now be able to log into this system. So the IP address we want to log in via is 172.20.12.75. So h2 centos at 75. And we can see that we're able to log in now via the, uh, from my terminal, from SSH, which we couldn't do before because of that issue with the route. Now, if we look at these interfaces, I obviously don't want all of these because at the moment they're all just picking up DHCP addresses from my network. Now, I don't, I don't want that. I want to use ETH1 as my control plane network. And these other two I want to put in a bond. So we, we need to do that via the director install process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back here and we're going to bring up the triple O docs and specifically the deployment guide. And we go down to the undercloud section. So if you're, if you're installing AAA for the first time, this is where you need to start the docs. So the first thing we need to do is we want to go and create a stack user. So we'll split up our screen a bit so that we can read the docs while we work on this environment. So let's go and create our stack user. We'll set a password for our stack user, which we'll just set up a random one. Then we need to make sure that that user is allowed to run sudo commands without a password. So that's important. So we want to go that. And then we want to change permissions on that file. And now we can switch to that user. So as we log in here, we should now be able to do sudo ls without being prompted for a password, which we can. So that first step is good. We've done that. Now we want to set the host name. So if we do hostname-f, we can see that I've already got a host name set, so we're all good. Let's just add that to etc host. And this will be triple O director.ini-home.net, triple O director. And now if we ping triple O director, we can see that that replies. So that's great, that's set up. Now, the next thing we want to do is enable our repos. So in this case, we're going to be using CentOS 9. So cat red hat release. We can see that we're using CentOS Stream 9. So to do that, in our docs, we can see we have this link here where we install the CentOS 8 ones from. So let's go and install the CentOS 9 ones. So we can see that in the URL, we're set to CentOS 8. We want to change that to CentOS 9. And here is CentOS 9. So we're looking for triple O repos, which is there. So copy link address, and then in here we do sudo dnf install dash y and the link to the repo.
Okay, so that's finished. So the next thing we want to do is enable our repos. So we do sudo dash capital E triple O repos and we're going to be deploying from the master branch of all the repos. So current triple O. So now our repos are enabled. Now we want to install Python triple O client. Okay, at the same time, so to configure our network the way we want to do it, we're going to use the default Ginger2 file for the undercloud network. Now I'm going to show you how to identify which file it uses and then how we can override that using some environment files during our undercloud install process. So what we want to do is essentially use this one and we'll keep all of this the same. But then we're going to add an OVS bond and we're going to add our other two interfaces to the OVS bond and configure our IP address on that. So I'll wait for this to install first, then we will go through and look at how we can do that and start to set up what we need to have in place for our undercloud install. Now while that's installing, I've actually gone and created a network diagram of what my network looks like as it has been requested before in these in the comment section of the videos. So this is actually my network, this is what we look like. So the internet is provided for me through Aussie Broadband and there's my referral code if anyone else wants to join, they're a great ISP, highly recommend, not sponsored. Um, now this is my core network, so that network comes into an ISP provider router. I'm using um, fiber to the node, so we come in on a traditional ADSL line and then that is how we establish the connection back to the fiber node. Then I just do pass through, so that's just a bridge, it's a fancy, it's a fancy ADSL to Ethernet converter basically. That plugs into my PFSense router. Now that does routing for multiple networks, I've only included the two that are relevant to us in, in this environment here. So 192.168.1.0 slash 24 is just my home LAN and then the infrastructure network that we use for all of this kind of stuff we're doing is 172.20.00 slash 16. Now that plugs into a Cisco 2960S PoE switch which is powering a Unify AC Pro for the wireless behind me and then a Unify 8 port PoE switch which powers the Raspberry Pi and also my Unify in-wall HD access point which is upstairs in, in my bedroom. Now from there, we have two trunks that come off that. One plugs into the R710, which is my Fedora server, and that's configured to have an OVS bond. So I've got the output from app CTL bond show there. And the other one is just BRLAN. So the primary interface on that server is in a bridge called BRLAN so that I can connect VMs to that as well. I can patch a, a VM into BRLAN and have things accessing my, my primary home network if I need to. And that's what that, you know, that bridge looks like from OVS VS CTL show. You can see it's got the interface E01 there. Now on that runs these OKD VMs that we've been looking at. So there's multiple, multiple VMs. I've got my Fedora work VM. I've got the OKD cluster all on there. And then the other server here is my Dell R610, which is the OKD worker node. And that's where all this CMV virtualization is happening. So on that node, we configured a Linux bond using the the CRD for the um, NNCE and we can see that I put the output of that there so we can see what that looks like, how it's configured, if you want to copy it you can do so and then we configure a bridge that bridges our bond and in this case that's called BL1. Now I've got multiple networks that then come off that so VLAN1, VLAN4 and trunk and my virtual machines attached to that bridge essentially. So that's what we can see when we look at our director node here if we click on that and go to network interfaces, we can see that VLAN 1, trunk, trunk. So let's go back and check on this install process now and see if it's finished. It looks like it's just about finished. I will link the, the diagram for my home network in the description below just as a Google Docs link so you can take it and have a look at it. Ask any questions if you want to ask any questions. I didn't go into the VM level networking, but I'm, I'm going to show you that in the video anyway, so I didn't think it was necessary.
Okay, so now that that's finished, the next thing we want to do is we want to start to make some of those customizations so that we can deploy the director node in a way that suits our network and our networking requirements. So what I'm going to do is make this directory called undercloud templates. And now in that, what we need to do is we need to do some, we need to make some overrides to the defaults. So if we want to look at the defaults, we can look here in this undercloud.yaml file. So this is in triple OE templates environments undercloud.yaml. And in here we can see that we have undercloud network config template and it points to templates undercloud.j2. Now if we look at the triple O Ansible project, we can see here we have templates undercloud j2. So that is this file here that it's referring to. So let's start out by just copying that file to here. So we'll do sudo cp use our share ansible and then roles and we want triple O network config templates under cloud.j2 so we're going to copy that to here okay so this is the default network config file for the under cloud so what we do is we create an OVS bridge named BR control plane and we set some IP addresses we set some routes DNS servers domain and then in the members we have the interface and the interface comes from our under cloud.com file so that will be replaced with whatever interface we put in there all of this can stay exactly the same. This is great. This is what we need. So the next thing we want to do though is we want to create another bridge and on that bridge we're going to put OVS bond. So we will copy that for now. Go down here and we will just paste that. And now for reference what we can do is we can use one of the templates in triple network config templates and we'll do bond with VLANs and bond VLANs.j2 so we can see here this has an example of what an OVS bond looks like. So we leave it as OVS bridge, we'll call this one BR Cloud. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are adding a type of OVS bridge, we're going to call it BR Cloud. We're going to set the default route to true. We're going to give it an IP address of 172.20.12.75, which is the IP address we just SSH'd in via. We're going to set some static routes, so we're going to make sure that when this is configured it has static routes to reach this system that I'm on, on the 192.168 network, and also the rest of the infrastructure network. Even though we've set default route true, I think having those static routes should safeguard me from any network failures. DNS servers, we're just going to apply the same DNS servers. Domain, same domain is fine, but then under the members section, instead of having type interface, we want type OVS bond. Now we're going to call it OVS bond zero without the hyphen. MTU we're going to leave local MTU is fine. OVS options. Here we want to set the, the options we want for this bond. And in this case, I'm going to try and use balance SLB. And now we need a members section. So we go down and we do members. Now this is where we configure the interfaces that will be members of our bond. So we want type interface name will be so we're going to add ETH2 and ETH3 to this ETH2 primary can be true and MTU will set the local MTU and now the second interface name will be ETH3 MTU will be local MTU okay so now that will just move the connection that I currently have established to this this bond once it's created so as I said we'll go back to VS code what we need now is we need to go back into our environments file, our undercloud YAML. So we need to override this argument. So we'll go back here and we'll create network override.yaml and we'll put parameter defaults. And now here we're going to put this, but what we're going to do is change the directory. So it's going to be home stack undercloud templates under cloud.j2 so that should point to the file that we just created and just to double check we'll copy that path we'll go out make sure that's the right path 
Oh, I, I misspelled templates. So that's, that's why we check before we run the deployment. Templates. Okay, so you can see that points to the right file. So that's going to be where we override all of these settings that we want for the environment. So I don't think there's anything else we need to add at this stage. So let's go back to our documentation. So we will copy over the undercloud.conf file and we're going to edit the undercloud.conf file. So ETH1, we want to replace with ETH3 in this case. So yeah, ETH1 is fine. We can leave ETH1. Local IP, local MTU, all of this is fine. We, we don't really need to change anything here. Uh, what we can do is go environment, environment, that's it, so custom end files. So we go down, we find the custom end files argument, and we want to set that to the custom environment file that we've created. So home stack, under cloud templates, make sure we spell it right, and then network override.yaml. And again, let's just double check that we've spelled everything right there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to install tmux DNF, so that we can run our install from a tmux session in case my SSH session drops out. So we'll start a tmux session and we'll run OpenStack under cloud install and then I'm just going to pass in reproduce command so that if I need to reproduce anything I can run the Ansible playbook without going through the whole heat start creation. Okay, so the host name that I've set, it's saying isn't fully qualified, so that's a step I skipped because I assumed it was set up correctly. So let's just do it again. Triple O director. Okay, so let's try our undercloud install again now that we've done that. Alright, let's just let that run and we will come back when it's finished and see how that network configuration went. I am expecting that the network will drop out, by the way, when it changes that interface, which is why we're running it in a TMUX session. Okay, so this is where I'm expecting that we will lose our network connectivity. So. Let's go back to the web browser. And we'll bring up the console again. Okay, so now we can see we have BR Cloud has been created, which is what we expected. So that, that looks great. Uh, So it looks like we've done something wrong with balance SLB there, so we need to look into that. But let's see if we can SSH back into this node. Oh, actually it's reconnected, that's great. So it re-established that connection all by itself on the new interface. Let's open up a new TMUX tab and we'll have a look at what we've done wrong with this OBS options. So to have a look at the error, there it is there. And if we have a look at what we did in our undercloud templates, in our network override. Oh, sorry, it's the one we want here. So here. So how about we have a look at how OBS options is used in Drupal heat templates. User share open stack triple O heat templates. Okay, let's go have a look at network environment J2.
Uh, so th there's that problem. I didn't set bond mode. I just said balance SLB. So what we actually wanted was bond mode. So let's go back, edit our file. So we up. So here we want bond mode. Bond mode equals. Let's do pseudo chain stack stack on that file. Oh. Okay, so now we've, we've fixed that problem, but let's just fix it on the fly here without stopping the deployment. So config.yaml. So here, what we need to do is we need to set this to bond mode equals. So bond mode equals. And now we can rerun that just doing osnet config dash c that file dash vvv insert codes. Okay, so we're still connected, so that's great. Let's have a look in VS CTL show. We can see that error is now gone. We have an OVS bond, so we do OVS app CTL. Bon, uh, bon show. Yes, bon show. Okay, so we can see here LACP is off. You can see it's using bond mode balance SLB. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. This is really good. Let's go back to our deployment and we'll see if this completes. That will be our undercloud installed. And um, then we need to go and configure our overclock nodes. So for the overcloud nodes, we're not going to use Ironic to provision them because there is no Ironic driver for OpenShift CNV at the moment. So what we're going to do with them is we'll go here to the console. We need to make the same initial changes that we did to the director node, like fixing that route, for example. So we'll log in with our CentOS user and password that we set when we created the VM. Now, I used the, the director node to clone and create the, com the compute and controller. So we need to set the host name. Hostname CTL, set hostname. So th this isn't really necessary because we're going to be setting it as part of our deployment. But it's just easy to keep track of what we're actually doing if we fix this now. Okay, so that's done. Now we have a look at our routes. We can see the lowest metric is on the pod network. So if I try and SSH to this on 172 2012 78 so 78 you can see that it essentially just hangs. You know, I try and ping that IP I don't get any responses from it and that's because of that reverse path filtering. So again what we need to do to fix it is just edit that that route on that first connection. So nmcli con mod system eth0 ipv4 route dash metric and we'll set it to 1004 like we did for the last one. It'll restart manager and nmcli con down system eth0 and we'll set it back up and now we'll check our routes there we are okay so we get we can see that works there now so let's try and ping that node again now it works and now we can log into it so once we're here we need to set up all the things to be in place for the director node to SSH in and be able to configure things so what we want to do is create the heat admin user. We want to add that to the wheel group. We want to set a password for the heat admin user. And we want to copy over the SSH key from our director node. So it doesn't look like there is one here. So 
So we'll just create a key. So we'll copy our key now, go back to our controller node, change user to our hate admin user. And we want to add that to the authorized keys file. So the next thing we need to do is we need to then add that user to be able to run the sudo commands without the password like we did here. And it needs to be the heat admin user instead of stack. Okay, now we can run sudo commands without the password. And that's really all we need to do at this point. We've, we've configured it so that we can access everything. What we need to think about is how we're going to configure the networks for the controller and the compute node. And I think we're just going to do it exactly the same way as our director node, except we will add the bond to BRX, for example, and we will make sure that's the default route for all traffic so that we're not trying to send traffic over that pod network. So that's our controller done. Let's go do our compute node now. Let's exit here. So we'll do our compute node next. Same thing, we're just going to log in with the CentOS user. On mod system ETH0 IPv4 route metric 1004. So come down system ETH0. Up, up here. Okay, our route metric has changed, so now we can log in via the IP address, which is 81 in this case. Okay, so exactly the same thing. Let's just set a host name so that we don't get confused by which system we're working on. Again, these are going to change as soon as we run the deployment, but this is just to make our own lives easier. So then we want to use our add, heat admin, user mod, ag, wheel, heat admin, and you, you can do the group when you do the user add command. Just set a password for the heat admin user. And we want to now we are the heat admin user we should be able to sudo ls we can so we want to make the ssh VI is the same. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's just transfer it from over here. So SSH copy ID to heat admin at 172.20.12.81. Okay, so it's not allowing password authentication to these VMs. So we could fix that, or I can just take the key again from here, paste in, because it's probably better to not have password authentication anyway. Each authorized keys, paste that in. Now let's try again. So we can get into our compute node. 
we can get a new our controller node. So that's perfect, that's exactly what we need. So all we need to do now is basically just wait for our undercloud install to finish so that we have a functional undercloud. Then we can go through and work on getting this deployment done. But what I might actually do is git clone in the triple heat templates that I had for the previous environment, just so we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. So make to our templates. I guess we can just get clone to templates. Okay, so these are the triple O heat templates that I used for the bare metal environment before we blew it away and rebuilt everything on CMV. So this is the template file we use to define our network configurations. Now obviously these don't mean anything to us anymore, but we still want to keep this one here. This is actually the one we're going to base our entire deployment off. And this is the one that was previously used for my Dell Compute node. So in here we can see we have NIC1 which gets added to the control plane. Now in this new circumstance, this isn't what we want. It's actually going to be NIC2. So what we can do to find that out is if we're on a compute node here, so we do OS, oh we don't have OS NIC1. So we do osnet-config-i, so it's just on our director node, and we want to use sudo. We can see what the NIC mappings look like, and this is obviously going to be the same for all nodes because they're all exactly the same set up as VMs. So we want to make sure that we use NIC2 instead of NIC1 because we don't want our control plane network to be on the pod network for OpenShift. So what we'll do in our network template file is we'll just copy this whole interface and we'll paste it down here. Now for this one, we're going to change it to NIC2. So that's going to be the actual interface that is on the control plane network. That's what we want. But for this one here, for NIC1, we don't want the control plane IP address. And what we're just going to do is we're going to set use DHCP to true. We don't want any routes on it. We don't want any defaults on it, we just want it to do its thing and pick up a DHCP address from the, the Kubernetes network. We don't care what it has. We're just leaving access to it just in case it becomes necessary. Now for these ones, these we want NIC3 and we want NIC4. Now everything else should be fine. We're going to leave everything else the way it is. Save and exit that one. So now what we want to do is we want to set that so that that is going to be our network config for our controller as well. Environment overrides. So we basically want all of them to look exactly like this. So we'll copy that and we'll replace these ones. Now we're not going to have a compute Dell role here because we don't have a physical node to add. So we're just going to have controller and compute. So that has been configured now. So theoretically, if I just run the deployment now, with everything exactly as it is in my deploy sh file, we should be fine. Okay, so I did notice an issue with my configuration. Um, what I was doing, if we have a look at the switch config, on the port channel I was trunking native VLAN 4, but I wasn't actually allowing any VLANs. So configuring a VLAN would actually result in a failure. So I've just tested this on the director node. So if we go back into our director node. So yeah, so back on our director node here, let's just do the stack team up. Okay, so there's a couple of issues with our network configuration and I just want to fix it before we move on under cloud templates under cloud j2 okay so in here I'm relying on the fact that I had trunk native VLAN 4 but that's not going to work for our overcloud we actually need to do VLAN tagging so the best way to confirm that's going to work in the overcloud deployment is to just make it work in the undercloud deployment so what I want to do 
is move all of these addresses here. And the default route. And I want to come down to here and put them under a VLAN device. We're going to do type VLAN, VLAN ID, in this case, will be VLAN 4. And then we just want to paste in all of this information and obviously just tidy up a little bit as well. Okay, now the other thing is we don't want this. We're going to delete that. That actually gets in the way. Actually, I think all of this gets in the way. Let's get rid of routes entirely. So we're going to leave the IP address, the default route to true VLAN ID 4. Now let's take a look in config.yaml config yeah, and just make that same change here. So we, we have, I've already come in here and done it. But let's do def route true and just make sure this works as well after we get rid of all the routes. Yeah. Okay, so that has, yeah, that's deleted those routes now and it's using our default route and I'm still connected, so that's great. That's essentially what we want to do for our over cloud network. So let's go back into our NIC configs, uh, bond VLANs, bond VLANs.j2. So here we want to make sure. Yeah, so if so, this line here, so if the network is external, then def route is true. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. That's going to now configure the VLANs, and we're going to configure the IP address on the external network, which will be able to access the rest of the cloud because it will be VLAN tagged. And we've now fixed up that switch to accept those VLAN tags. Um, now we should be now we should be good. I just want to run the undercloud. I want to wait for the undercloud install to finish again. Um, you know, I actually might start it again. So I want to wait for this to finish again before we do the overcloud deployment. So we might look at the overcloud deployment tomorrow and I'll just attach it to this video. But that will at least ensure that, you know, we're able to create a VLAN tagged network, which we can see. We can see here, now we have VLAN 4 in here and the IP address is actually on VLAN 4 and the traffic is obviously still able to reach the router because I'm logged into the device. So that's what we want. Um, now that we've verified it here, I feel a bit more comfortable knowing that the overcloud will be fine. But I just wanted to get that working and walk through that process, make sure we're all happy and then we can proceed with the rest of the deployment once this undercloud install finishes. Okay, so that didn't actually work. So. The reason that my ping was still working is because the IP address was actually on the BR Cloud bridge, um, not from the IP address that was on the VLAN. The VLAN traffic doesn't seem to be going through still. So I'm not 100% sure why at the moment. It's not overly necessary for VLANs to work. I think this is just a kubevert issue and with the way I've set up the bridges in on the OpenShift node. So I'll continue to troubleshoot that in the background. As I said, it's not imperative to the deployment because we can just make sure that our external network uses the, the native VLAN and doesn't use VLAN tagging, which isn't a massive problem. So what I'm going to do is I've just gone in and just set up some additional VLANs on that, that bond, so VLAN 4, VLAN 1. I'll just remove the DHCP and rerun OSNet config for now. So this will give me some interfaces that I can troubleshoot with over the next few days and we can just proceed with the rest of our deployment at the moment. So if we have a look here, we can see we've got VLAN 4 and VLAN 1 there now. Show. We can see the VLAN 4 and VLAN 1 here, and this is one that I added manually, so we can just delete that. But in the meantime, let's wrap up this video with a quick recap of everything we've done. So what we did here was we followed through the triple O documentation for the undercloud install process. So if you just Google triple O docs deploy guide, you see the first link is the deployment guide. So that makes it really easy to find. Then we scroll down to the 
triple O OpenStack deployment and we want the undercloud installation page. Now on this page we go through, we create our stack user, make sure the stack user can run sudo commands without requiring the password. We need to set our host name. Now even if the host name is set, it's still we still run through these because as you saw with me, I run into an issue. We add that to our host file. Then we just install our repositories and I'll leave the link to the CentOS 9 stream repositories in case you wanted to test out CentOS 9. Then we enable the repositories running sudo dash capital E triple O repos current triple O, which will be the current and most recent um, master branch of everything. We install triple O client. Then we copy over our undercloud.com file and if we have a look in the undercloud.com file here, we'll just have a look at what we said actually. So we'll remove all the comments and all the blank lines from undercloud.com. So we we went through and explicitly set some things here. So um, I was going to disable Ironic in the beginning, but I, I want to walk through the new deployment process as of Wallaby and what will be OSP 17 in the next video, because I think it's going to be important to look at and understand and explain so that everyone understands the changes from what has traditionally been um, Triple O and Red Hat OpenStack platform up until this point and what will be the future in OSP 17. Um, so we added our custom environment file here and now in our custom environment file we have some overrides. I ended up doing some um, some Docker Puppet debugging so I set that to true but the one the most important one was this undercloud network config template and this is where we are creating those custom those customizations to the network such as the bond for example which wouldn't normally be configured on the undercloud node and if we open that file uh, we open this file we can see that we left the default section which was this that's all the default stuff and then we added this section down here which is OVS um, bridge called BR cloud and then in that we're adding an OVS bond called OVS bond zero and we're using the bond mode balance SLB so that's software load balancing it doesn't require the switch to participate in LACP or anything. It's going to just do some software load balancing within the system itself. Now we set that to our default route. Default route is true there. Then we gave it an IP address, which is the one we want to access. Now we did try and move this IP and default route to VLAN 4, which actually didn't work in the environment. And that's what I'm going to troubleshoot and I will provide an update once I figure out what the problem is. Now we added some members here. We added Ethernet, two and Ethernet 3 interfaces and we're just using the local NTU variable and then we added those VLAN devices so that I can troubleshoot moving forward. And then we just run OpenStack undercloud install and we used the reproduce command so dash dash reproduce there. Now what that actually does if we go into the triple O deploy directory and undercloud we can see here we have a bunch of these tarred files. So let's have a look at the latest one. So this looks like the latest one here. So we tar XVF on that file. And wait for it to finish. And then we CD into this directory. We can see in here that we have this Ansible playbook command. So that reproduce command will write this Ansible playbook command to this file and then in here we can see we have the Ansible playbook command that is used to run that deployment so if we need to troubleshoot anything we can do it really quickly just by running that Ansible playbook command script and we can also get more verbose output by adding like dash vvv for example if we wanted to troubleshoot specific things we can start a task and use all the kind of Ansible goodness that helps us to debug an Ansible deployment without going back through the heat process and reusing OpenStack undercloud install. So for example, if I do sudo for that one, we can see there that it's just rerunning that undercloud install process. So that's basically it. That's all we got up to during this video. I did edit some overcloud network files, but we're going to recap that in the next video when we look at the bare metal deployment process as of OSP 17 and Triple O Wallaby moving forward. So I'm going to leave this video there. I'm going to wrap it up. 
I will upload this one and then I will start working on the next one where we walk through the deployment and the importing of those bare metal nodes that we will be using as pre-deployed servers. If you have any questions in the comments below and I'll leave all the links to everything we've discussed as well.